Merkel Media. And then all of a sudden, one of these things comes up on my left and starts hitting my car and starts banging me. I look over and I can see like a black mass, but there's no reflection off it. There's uh-huh. no like anything. I can't see anything. All I can see is that there's something there blocking other traffic, the lights behind me. I can't see it. It's hitting me. And it's like knocking my car. It's trying can to you feel my, it. Oh, like- yeah. It's trying to knock my car off the road. So I'm like, oh my God. And then this trucker behind me or in front of me drops back, gets behind me, kicks his high beams on it, and looks at it. And he sits. A trucker? A trucker did. Yeah. And he's looking at me. All right behind me. He's got his high beams on. And then he comes pulling up behind me as close as he could to me and speeds up and tries to knock this thing off of me. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. That's why I was like, <laughs> Hammer Road Legends, baby. This was all circulating around the base that. A giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long, bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave, and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand, and he's running really fast. And spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody else, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over, and there are two small gray entities pulling it. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush, and I touch air. Couldn't breathe, and I couldn't move, because I know I'm seeing a monster. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me. Just get a hold of me. If you want to hear more shows on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the join button and become a member today. There you can get yourself access to all the membership content from before and after your time as an arrival, a new arrival as a member on the website. You'll also get access to the Castos app, which has all the membership content on there. And you get access to ad-free listening of the Tuesday shows on the Castos app and all the overtime segments as well. If that interests you, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button and become a member today. Friends, we have a heater of an episode for you today. We actually have one of the most riveting stories you are ever going to hear on the Confessionals, at least to date you have ever heard on The Confessionals. We have Adam coming on the show today, and he's going to be talking about his experience with UFOs, portals, dogmen chasing him down the highway, all in the Oak Ridge, Tennessee area. If you have been listening to the show, you know I've been talking about Oak Ridge because Oak Ridge has a particle accelerator. They have actually talked about how they are trying to pierce through dimensions and open portals. They have said this, and because they have said this, I'm going to make a special reel this week on my Instagram page for the listeners of the show to inform them and show them that, yes, Oak Ridge did say this back in 2019, that they are going to make a portal extending into a mirror universe. They want to memory hold it. We're not going to let them do it. So I'm going to put it up on the Instagram this week. So after you hear this show, make sure you hit up the Instagram and give us a follow because I'm going to be releasing that information later this week. Listen, friends, what you're about to hear from Adam is a very uh, once in a lifetime experience that most people don't want to go through, including Adam. But I went to this conference this past week in the Dogman Conference in Paris, Tennessee. It was awesome. And a lot of great people over there, a house guy, podcast guys surprised me by showing up and hanging out with me. It was a great, great time. But I did meet a guy named Joe 
who kind of backed up what you're going to hear today because he had his own experience of a dog man chasing him in his tractor trailer. And it was an absolute crazy story that he shared with me this weekend. And he actually might be swinging through the studio sometime soon to sit down with me behind the microphone and actually record his experience of encountering a dog man chasing him down the road in his tractor trailer. It was one of the most scary stories I have ever heard in my entire life. So I really hope that Joe does come through and decide to talk to me on the record about this. But I will tell you that Joe's experience is kind of similar to what you're going to hear today. So with that said, let's get to Adam and his Oak Ridge Dogman Portals crazy experience that lasted over three days. Okay, today we got ourselves an in-studio guest. We have Adam, man. How you doing, man? Good, how you doing, brother? Hey, you're number three. Number three. You're number three, man. Oh, so wow, the trifecta. We're, we're coming up on uh, almost 500 episodes, and you're the third person that's been in, been in studio in person. That is a and, huge honor. Yeah, man. So uh, most of the show has been built on uh, people doing things remotely, right? But now that I have this space here, there are certain people I'll invite in studio right. and uh, you are one of them. And actually you actually go against the grain in the sense that typically I would not invite people like you in the studio because uh, I have this general rule that if it's just a fan, I'm not going to really invite them in because it could be a complicated, you know, cause I I've had issues with people who took have taken liberties in the past, you know? And so I, I try to be private, but when you emailed, you were like, Hey, I have firsthand experience with Oak Ridge. I was like, you want to come in studio? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm like, that did happen, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I got to talk to you mm -hmm. and I can't take the chance of internet work, not working like it is right now. Right. Fair enough, so man. we're in the studio and we spent about, uh, I'd say better part of an hour trying to get internet working. I have no idea why it's not working. So we're using my phone as a hotspot just so I have some kind of internet here on my iPad. But, um, yeah, man. Like, so you're here and we're going to, we're going to kind of jump all over the map today. Uh, I don't know how long this recording is going to be, but I do know it's more than likely going to be an overtime show. Uh, we're going to start out, out with uh, Oak Ridge and the topic of Oak, Oak Ridge. Then we're going to probably migrate into the overtime with your Bigfoot experience, cryptid stuff. Uh, and also you have a past of being uh, involved. I guess, the is it, is it right to say Satanist? Like you were a Satanist or you were part of the Satanic Church or yeah, what? Yeah, it was more into the demonology. I demonology? Yeah. Okay. I mean... On the other, the other wrong side of it, let's say that. No, it's yeah. clear, <laughs> clearly by your tattoos, I would agree. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, on your left and right arm, on your forearms you have uh, what, what are those sigils this, yeah this is Buer and this is uh, Azazel okay so that's a yeah like uh, Azazel is so like Azazel yeah same thing yeah. really yeah that's his sigil that's his sigil yeah. why don't you cover that up dude why would I <laughs> It's who I am, man. It's oh my <laughs> gosh, dude. You carry them with you. Yeah, well, oh. they're always going to be with you. Yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> well, listen, uh, there are people right now thinking, Tony, be careful. You got <laughs> He's going to listen. I had, I, I've been in the presence of a Satanist. I was trying to put demons on me. Did you ever hear that story? Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm to give you a hug and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I would like to talk to you about that in newer time too, because sure. see what your, what sure. your thoughts are on it. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. my, my conclusions have come from just, uh, years of talking to people and, and all that stuff. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe we'll, we'll, we'll dive into some of that stuff in the newer time. But, uh, for this first part, I want to, talk about Oak Ridge uh, because you emailed us and in the subject line, it's the portals at Oak Ridge and demonology. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you said in this email, I'm ready to talk about something that happened to me involving Oak Ridge and the undeniable evil demo demonic entities I know are coming through there. It's a lot to talk about, but I'm coming to you because I heard you mention something about the portals there. I can honestly say it's nothing like you've ever heard, and it's hard to believe, but I swear my life it's true. That being said, it directly in it involves this hell beast called Dogman, mm -hmm. which I now believe is not from anywhere but another dimension. Yes. And I was like, bro... You had me at Oak Ridge. You know, like, <laughs> I should have said Oak Ridge and hung up. Yeah, like all you gotta do is like, hey, 
Oak Ridge portals, dog man coming through, seen it. Okay. That's all you need to say. Yeah. You're on the show. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> and so, uh, anyways, so um, we're going to start out there. We're going to get into that. Uh, and I feel like there's something else I wanted to to mention before we really jumped in, but I forgot to, I forget what it is, but uh, I did forget to tell you this off air and I'll tell you this now. Uh, I have notes in front of me. So if you see me typing, just keep talking. I'm just writing things down. So I don't forget ADD, you no, know, you're not or, judging me. No, okay. heck no, bro. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> you already like, done that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like we've, we've like we, you and I were talking, I, I've heard uh, stuff like you're talking to the right guy for this stuff. Absolutely. Um, let me actually make a note right now. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'll just say right now, uh, billboard. Okay, the mm-hmm. billboard out there. Oh yeah, yeah. So at some yeah. point we need to talk about that. But let's sure. let's uh, yeah. let's jump into uh, oh, this Oak Ridge experience. Yeah. Before you start telling your experience and story, I will inform people based on, on my limited knowledge of what Oak Ridge is. Uh, if people have been listening to the show recently, I've been talking a lot about CERN, Particle Accelerator in Switzerland, and what that is. Uh, by the time people hear this, they'll have the opportunity to hear my episode entitled what is CERN where I had Dave Zed on the show and we t- we kind of go into that uh, I I believe that uh, now Oak Ridge is what CERN is it's just on a smaller level I've heard that too they have a collider they, they, yeah, do. they do okay. yeah they have a particle accelerator and it's just smaller uh-huh. uh, but they are I am I believe they're pursuing very similar things and I believe that Oak Ridge might be pursuing more darker things than CERN. I think CERN is filled with like like thousands of scientists that really believe in the mission. They're just like we're trying to enlighten humanity with science and and it, it, it's it's very pure-hearted at least on a on a uh, on a macro level when it comes to it. And it, I think there are sinister maybe people in CERN, but I think the majority of the scientists working there are just like it's great guys. There's mm-hmm. nothing that like I don't know why you guys think there's anything weird going on here because they don't know um it's one of those things where with uh like these government programs you you don't like somebody who's working on like let's just uh let's say uh area 51 back in the day forget if this is true or not i'm just using it as a topic launching point say there's at area 51 there's hundreds of scientists in there and they're all doing things right uh, but it, it's very compartmentalized. So like if you're not working on this little tiny piece of biological matter, like you don't know what the guy next to you is doing. And even the biological matter that you have in front of you, uh, you don't know where it came from. They're just saying, hey, look for this chromosome. And the, OK, got it. Like it's very compartmentalized. So that person, that scientist just knows that he's working on something that's top secret. He doesn't know what it is, but it seems very uh, harmless from his perspective. I think that's a lot of the scientists at CERN. Yep. Uh, now, at Oak Ridge, just from my limited interaction with people uh, uh, with their experiences at Oak Ridge or, you know, being in this area, because li- if the listening audience is listening right now, um, I I live like, what what would you say, 25 minutes from Oak Ridge where we're at here? Yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah so, not far at all. So Oak Ridge is about 25 minutes from here. And we, uh, we talk to people that have direct experience because it, it's a big employer in this area. Uh, and I, from what I've gathered... I think Oak Ridge might be more dangerous than CERN, in my personal opinion. Uh, and I think it was in 2019, Oak Ridge even came out in an article and said that they're they're looking to uh, open up portals. And then when everybody threw a fit, they were like, oh, we were just kidding, just tongue in cheek kind of thing. And it's like, no, you weren't. You're scientists. You guys don't do tongue in, tongue in cheek. You're not comedians. You know yeah, what I mean? They came back trying to debunk that real quick. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, they're not anymore. <laughs> no. And so um, that, that's kind of like a thousand foot view of Oak Ridge. Uh, I, I would love to maybe one day have a scientist on the show from Oak Ridge, but I'm sure that will never happen. Uh, but from from my perspective and vantage point, it, it's I think it's a pretty dangerous facility. It is where they developed the nuclear bomb for World War II, uh, and it's been top secret ever since. They, oh, just, just the implications of that alone has to tell you there's some dark energy coming out of that place. For sure. Yeah, I like mean, that thing wiped out a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I mean, like the 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 when they were building Oak Ridge, yeah. uh, I I was talking, and we'll get to your experience in a second. We're just kind of we're just kind of cool, migrating yeah, into it. We'll um, so when 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 they were building Oak Ridge, I was talking to the guy. I, I bought recently bought half a cow uh, to stock a freezer. 
uh, because <laughs> I was gonna say, wait a second. Listen, like, uh, like half I, a cow. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> the, the other half is coming. We're gonna yeah, screw, we'll screw it all together. We'll have a whole cow. Yeah. We'll start moving soon. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, I, I practice what I preach. I'm a prepper. Sure. I prepare. I try to make sure that I can feed my family. I believe that this fall we're gonna see a lot more shortages in the, on the store shelves. I just want to make sure that the kids have protein. Oh yeah, sell me some food bucks before I leave. Yeah, there you I'm go. Back. We're <laughs> thinking about this after, after September is supposed to get rough. Yeah. Me. So. But, yeah. Um, Anyway, but anyways, the farmer I bought the cow off of, uh, him and I were talking, and he said that when he was growing up around here, mm -hmm. talking to the old timers who were here witnessing Oak Ridge being built, they said that when they saw when when Oak Ridge was being built, they were seeing this white Bigfoot running around this area. Uh. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, I and I just recently did a show. I think was, I called it like the White Bigfoot of Tennessee or something like yep. that, and. In Pennsylvania, all across northern Pennsylvania, there's a white Bigfoot, and I believe there's deep underground military bases in that area. So I think there's a connection here, and uh, I and you're winking at me, so yeah, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, the I'm, one. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, I must be hitting something. Yeah, but um, so like th this this whole area has a history with Oak Ridge, yep. and and I think that there is definitely, I I so I believe that. Are, are there are people in power in this world that are actively trying to merge the paranormal with science? Uh, I think they're they're alchemy, you know. Yeah. And I think that I personally believe that Oak Ridge has always been on some level trying to practice alchemy, and so they call it the secret city. Is that what they call That's it? That's the name of it, the secret city, because it was not on the maps before like 1950 or something. Yeah, so I, I uh, guess I guess it's not so secret now. Not anymore. <laughs> but you're wondering what secret is it? Like, what is the secret? Of right. The city? Yeah. I, I was talking to a, yeah. a house builder down the street from mm -hmm. me, and uh, he was talking to me. And I, t I mentioned about what I do for a living, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Oh, you'll have a lot of stories with the Oak Ridge." And he's and he said though he's like the locals typically don't like talking about it. He's like if people come around here talking about it, we know they're from around not from around here. And so he was an older guy, and so I was like, okay, so th there's like this protective nature with it, and that reminds me of Raven Rock in Pennsylvania. It's an under yeah. underground mil uh, military base that. If you go into that area, the people who live in that area, they know everybody. And so if they see your car and they don't recognize it, they're immediately calling Raven Rock saying, hey, there's somebody down the street here. You might want to come look at them. Ooh, and, and so it's just like, man. yeah, you know what I mean? But like that, Raven Rock is a very um, sparsely populated area. Uh, that's not the case for around here, you no, know. Like, like not. Oak Ridge is right next to Knoxville. Knoxville, two hundred thousand people. Yep. College Town, UT. I think. Is it three fifty now? 350, yeah. Oh man, yeah. If, it, if it grows another hundred thousand people, I might have to move again. Yeah, like, <laughs> like towards Chattanooga. <laughs> sick, yeah. sick and tired of all the people. Uh, right? We we almost moved to uh, South Dakota because there's less than ooh. a million people statewide. But, yeah, that place has got a lot of Sasquatch encounters over there, dude. And they have an underground scientific lab. I forget what it's called. Surprise. I was, I was like, yeah. let's go. But the problem is, yeah. fifty inches of snow a year. I ain't trying to do that. Yeah, so yeah. Tennessee, here we come. <laughs> Pennsylvania to another place. Nah, yeah. yeah, that's like me going to Toronto to like Alaska. Like, yeah. So uh, that, you know, let's let's yeah. let's start bringing it around to you. So uh, you you uh, just moved here oh, yeah. from Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a dual citizen, yep. uh, and you're now living in Tennessee. Yep. Uh, and you. And I don't know anything about this Oak Ridge experience. So you're going to start us off. You're going to enlighten us. Uh, and I'll start off with this. And then you can kind of go into okay, it. Sure, sure. Uh, with Oak Ridge and your experience at Oak Ridge, is this something that happened recently? Or is this something that happened a long time ago that you remember? It's in May. In May this year. May this year, yeah. So this is this happened after I already moved to Tennessee. I moved here in April. Yeah, this was just on the road. This is like, what is it, August now? So it was three months ago. Not even less than three months ago. All right, let's take a second to talk about our first sponsor today, which is HelloFresh. You get fresh farm pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep with HelloFresh. You can skip the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Gear up for the busy fall season with 55 weekly options and take the stress out of meal planning and prepping. Listen, this is the very first time in my life I had to drop children off at preschool. I've never done that before. And I was thinking about it this week. I was thinking there have been parents doing this forever. 
gearing the kids up, waking up way early in the morning to get them to school by 8 o'clock in the morning, then picking them up and then dealing with the get to bed and stuff. I get it. I finally get it. The evenings are crammed and you don't have time to plan dinners because you got to get the kids to bed early so they can get up early. Take that stress away from yourselves with the HelloFresh quick and easy recipes, 20 minute meals and low prep, low cleanup options. No worries. No headaches, just great flavored food. So right now you can go to HelloFresh.com slash Confessional16 and use code Confessional16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Confessional16 and use code Confessional16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Go on over there, get your free food right now. So what happened? I mean, were you were you working there? Were you driving by? What happened? Okay, I'm going to give you a quick little history of why I'm here, first of all, and then mm-hmm. how this went down. I came here because of a girl. I used to live here when I was a kid, younger. I moved. I went back to Toronto when I was 30. Stayed there till 39. I came back. I was with this woman, not to mention, you know, Toronto getting so draconian with the COVID laws. Yeah. I just wanted out. I couldn't do it anymore. No shots for me. So, Dual citizenship, you can come to the States that's right. easily. I was like, bye. So anyway, I came here. <laughs> Everything was going good for a bit. Things didn't work out with the woman. Ended up homeless. I didn't have a place to live. I was living in my car. Uh, it's not I, good to be homeless in Tennessee. No, it's not. Very good, but I'll tell you what, you know what? They'll let you crash in the parking lot somewhere if you need to. Yeah. And I was trying to find a place to live. I get, things just went bad real quick for me, so I didn't really have the option. And this is recently. This is just, yeah. Like, this is, at this point, it was April. Wow. So, um, I was, uh, I, so my big, my big way to get away from everything is fishing. So I went over to where Oak Ridge is. They got some, um, like a steam plant out there. They got some rivers. And I was going for a uh, catfish. It was spring. I was like, I'm going to go stay up late at night, throw my, uh, throw in some chicken livers or whatever and catch catfish. And I'd done that for three days in a row. At this point in time, I'm working for like a, like I'm order picking at night. So I was kind of like, I was done with that job. I was about to start a new one as a, a manager in a moving company. So I was kind of like in between jobs and I had nowhere to be. So I was killing it one night. I was just up to like four o'clock. No, it was, I'm sorry, about two o'clock in the morning. And I was leaving and I just got this really weird feeling. Um, I kept hearing like something in the woods and I was by myself at this point in time. I'm like on the river. I'm probably about like maybe 10 miles from Oak Ridge. And um, I just remember like I was leaving it and I was pulling out and I had this really, just a really weird feeling. I didn't have a lot. I remember I was almost out of gas, but I had to wait for the next morning to get my paycheck. It was direct deposit. I had no money in my account, on my account or anything. So I was like, I have to stop somewhere, wait for my check to come in at six and then fill my car up and keep going. Wow, <laughs> like I was okay. at that point in my life, wow. you know? So, um, I'm leaving and I see out of the corner of my eye up in the sky, there's this green, uh, like an orb, like it's a glowing green orb with like a red dot that was swirling around it. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that's a UFO for sure. Cause yeah. I'm like, what is that thing? And I remember I stopped and I got out of my car and the thing stopped also. Like as soon as I got out, it, it stopped too. And it was just kind of like doing this right number, like where it's kind of just hovering, kind of moving just a little bit, but not not like all the way. Got back in my car and it started moving again. And I'm like, why what was this? So I just kind of like, if I followed it, well, it followed me kind of thing. And it went, finally it went over and took like a left and went to like a grocery store parking lot. And um, I pulled in and I'm like, well, this is where I'm going to wait till the, <laughs> till the grocery store opens so I can get some gas because I have no other options. But I remember like watching and it kind of went off into the distance over a river and way behind it and then disappeared kind of. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I'm kind of looking up in the sky and I noticed the stars. There's like the constellations. I could see the constellations, but I couldn't see any stars behind them. Just kept staring at them and the constellations started to move. So I'm like, what am I looking at? What What is going on right now? The constellations are starting to drift, but not all together, like, you know, like like the, like the, the wheel in the sky. But like one was kind of going this way, one was kind of going this way. And after a while, it started to look like what I was looking at were a bunch of ships projecting stars. Really? Yeah, like they were projecting stars underneath them, and all of them were trying to hold a position, but they were gently drifting in different ways. Like this one's going this way. What? Yeah, so I'm like, what am I? Is this missile? De- Immediately, I was thinking missile defense. I was like, maybe these are some kind of missile defense system where they have something in place to keep Oak Ridge from being attacked. I don't know. I didn't know what to think. I was like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Never in my life have I ever seen one Holy like this. Holy crap. 
So anyway, here's where it gets even weirder. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get a little excited. This is hard for me to talk about. I've never, this is like, I've seen a lot of weird stuff in my life. This was a rough one. So over behind this, beside this grocery store, I see these lights. They're like, it's like a blue, like almost like you ever seen, you haven't seen a black light, how it lights everything up. You can see like green or pink. Yeah. Or, I see this like green light in a tree. And it's kind of like a, like a, a square that's a little like, um, what is it, like a, not like a, a rhombus or something, you know, like one of those, it's an uneven square or whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know what they're called. And it's sitting in this tree and it's kind of just gently turning. And I'm like, what is that? So I walked over there and I start to see that there's like one in the tree. There's one about six yards back behind some grass. There's like one by a tree or somewhere else. And there's multiple of them. At first, what I thought I was seeing was somebody's lights for their house, like their, their porch lights or something that was behind grass or something. But then it, I realized these are, these are something different. So I started trying to get close to it. And at this point in time, I'm thinking maybe these are UFOs I'm looking at and what I'm, I'm going to go take a look. Cause I'm usually like, I'm pretty ballsy when it comes to some of this stuff. I'm like, I'm going to check. Yeah. So I got down there and I got real close and I realized that they, these were not like something standing up and looking at me. These were, these were like literally, uh, shapes that were just colors that were just floating in the sky. How high? Uh, I mean, one was in a tree, probably about 12 feet. One was probably about three feet off the ground. One was probably about six. And they're just shapes floating. They're just weird shapes. Illuminated floating. shapes. You, you know what it looked like at first? It looked like if you had a bulletproof vest made of glowing uh, black light with green. Mm -hmm. Like something like that. Like some. At first, I thought it was somebody's, like a section of our clothing that was glowing. But it, the more I stared at it, the more I was just like, "What? there's no rhyme or reason to this. This is just, what I don't even know what I'm looking at. Wow. That's where... Um, I, the things got really weird for me. I was like, okay. And this was at the grocery store? Yeah, it was right behind the grocery store. Like, it was not far. There was like, we're, it was like, a, in an, I wouldn't say a neighborhood. There wasn't a whole lot going on over there. It was like a valley. Um, It's actually, I, I could probably tell your people where to look. I'd have to look it up as, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, it's not, it's not, it's not very well populated. It's not rural per se, but it's, there's not a lot going on over there. Yeah. I, and, well, you know what? Mm -hmm. I think I might get... I think I, I at first I just shook my head no to you because I, I I but I think it, I think it actually is is okay because it's not my job to protect any of this stuff. Um, it's right up by Solway. So what grocery store is this? Uh, Ingles. Ingles. Yeah, it's like Ingles over there, but it's kind of like between Carnes and, and Solway. So okay. I, when I left Oak Ridge, I was coming out that way and I was passing through Solway to over by where that Ingles is. It's probably like ten miles. Okay. That's where I followed that UFO all the way over there. And you get there, and I mean, and the weirdest thing was, it's like if you ever listen to like you know your show or Wes's show, they talk about how everything gets dead quiet. Mm -hmm. You don't hear a cricket or anything, which is there was nothing quiet. Like it was so quiet, it was creepy. So I'm sitting there, and I'm starting to try to talk to this stuff. I'm like, maybe I can, you know, elicit some kind of communication with whatever this is. And I'm like, hey, just trying to say hi. Blah, how blah, blah, far blah. away were you? Oh, maybe 15 yards. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, like I couldn't, that's what I was trying to get as close as I could to see if I could see a face or see a, a person, but all I could see was these, these shapes. So um, at this point in time, I started to get a little scared, admittedly. Sure. <laughs> I started to get a little scared. So I backed off and I kept walking. And um, okay, well, let me explain where, where, where I saw the shapes was like right beside the store, the grocery store. And then there's a parking lot that kind of followed it up all the way towards like a, towards a bank that was closed. And I started walking back up, and there was like a patch of trees and like a swamp looking like area. And I hit another part where the tree was, and I heard something kind of shuffle. And I was like, whoa, what was that? And then I smelled this rotting flesh, like just like this disgusting, nasty smell. And it hit me like where I felt like the heat on my chest. I could smell it, and something went <laughs> and like hissed at me. And I'm like, what was that? I was like, okay. So I kind of backed off. On, in my head, I'm thinking some kind of Sasquatch or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've had experience with those things a couple times, but I'm like, this colored thing I've never seen before. So I'm just like, I'm going to walk back to my car. I'm going to sit right here. The sun's going to come up, and I'm leaving. You know? <laughs> so I'm backing off, and I'm, I'm once again, I'm captivated by these floating constellations that look like UFOs. They're still there. They're still there. 100%. Wow. They're not, they're not even hiding it. They're floating. Like they're moving. I got to go out there, man. Dude, I know. I was going to tell crap. you. I was going to be like, "Tony, you want to see some stuff? I'll show you." Wow. Man, so um I went over there and I was 
looking at them a little bit longer. And then all of a sudden, I, I mean, I'm going to try to make this noise for you, but it's in, it's impossible. And it was like, get a run! And it just screamed for like a good 10 seconds. And mm. it was like, ah, I mean, I can't do it. It's impossible for me to do it. Mm-hmm. This noise was so loud and so drawn. And, and the only thing I could think in my head was that had to be a demon. Mm. Like that was some kind of like ghoul or something. Like, you know, I think of it, your old stories. We talked about like the rake or something. Yeah. I can imagine something making this noise, just like this horrible bellowing scream. And um, it echoed through the whole valley. And, it, and this it, is while you were backing away to go to your car. Well, I was at my car at this okay. point. I was looking at the stars and I heard this and I was like, all right, this is getting really freaking weird. Mm. So I'm kind of starting to get a little, I'm like really nervous at this point. I don't really have any gas to go anywhere. I'm waiting for my check to clear. Holy crap. So I, I forgot was, about that. <laughs> so I had like, I had less than like one bar of gas in my car. Like I'm at empty. Oh. So at this point in time, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm just going to just drive somewhere else and get out of this spot. Mm-hmm. And I drove up the road and I went to another gas station and uh, it was about like a quarter mile down the road and immediately as soon as I got out I could hit that smell again like bang it hit me like a million times and I could just start to hear them I heard this noise it started going bar, bar, bar. and I was like alright I don't know what this is but I went back to <laughs> back to Ingalls I was like I'd rather be in the middle of a parking lot so you drove a quarter mile away and, uh, and, and it, was, it, it followed you it was already there it was wow yeah so I'm okay. wondering I'm either thinking there's a bunch of whatever the hell this is around there or they just went right to where I was immediately. Almost like it knew where you were going to go. I mean, they just I either that or just went there. Or just followed you. I mean, yeah. it was just so fast. I at least kept pace with you the whole time. And the thing was, what made it so weird was the smell. It was like, imagine if, if you had like a 900-pound a, a fat dude who just ate 300 pounds of rotting meat and just let it sit in his stomach for mm. two days and then burped in your face. Wow. That's the kind of nastiness. I'm t- it was just abs- it was horrifically smelling. And um, God, it was nasty. So after that, I went back to the Ingalls parking lot, and I was like, I'm just going to have to suck it up. So I'm sitting there in the middle of the parking lot. Uh, still, the, the stars are still doing that thing where they're floating. It looks like ships. Mm-hmm. I could still see the color in the tree and two more beside it that were now starting to float closer. Like they were watching me at this point. Like they were observing me. And I'm trying to pull my camera phone out. I have like 8% left. I don't know if they drained it or if I just drained it and didn't know. I couldn't tell you. All I know is I had almost none left. I got like one picture of it and it was too far away, but just like a little color. Mm. So that's why I, that's why I went out and got a Canon now. Cause I'm like, I want to. Oh, that's right. Cause you were saying you yeah. got, yeah. Now I'm like, not going to happen again. That was too <laughs> weird. So, um, anyway, so as this is happening, I'm getting paranoid cause I can still, I keep smelling that smell again, like that, mm. that rotting flesh smell. And I'm watching these colors, and I watched three different shapes. It was like two were, two were pink, and one was green. Like, and I'm talking like black light, like almost like construction paper, black light green. Like, it's hard to explain. It's almost like an off green. Mm. And um, they came together. They're floating right towards each other, like they're watching, like observing me. All came together in one spot, and turned into the face of a gray alien. It was like all green, and the eyes were pink. Like the wow. two, pe- like I mean, uh, c- clearly that's what it was. It was like an almond shape, two almond eyes that were pink, and it was looking right back at me. And I'm like, "What? There's nothing. There's nothing that does that. I mean, wow. what, what does that? Like, it's it's just. I mean, I don't know what this is at this point in time. I'm thinking like, I give up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. This isn't. This is just beyond weird. Of all my experiences in my life, I've never seen. I've never seen just random shapes turn into a face to look at me like it was almost like it was just teasing me or something wow yeah so anyway that that whole night ended up like that just all night long that thing sat there and looked at me like a grayling head for about two hours while i sat there and then it just kind of i guess broke up and went away and uh as the sun come up all the all the weird baru sounds that they were being making they all stopped I even, like, after what happened, I even drove around one time around that whole parking lot behind the place and everything. Nothing. No noise at all. And um, I went and got some gas and got the hell out of there. <laughs> and that was the end of the night at Ingalls. <laughs> Holy crap. So, yeah. So, that was a weird one, man. Um, but it gets worse. I, it gets way worse than that. They, here, here's the next night. Hold, hold on. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. <laughs> so, I thought we were wrapping up the story. No. This is the beginning, brother. This is why. This is the beginning? This is the beginning. Dude. 
dude. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> holy crap. Okay. So, all right. We're going to let you get into that then. Yeah. Um, now, I think that what... All right. I just got. I just got to tell you, mm. the 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 constellations in the sky moving. Yeah, I, I, like that is so fascinating to me, and, and I don't know why. Because to be honest with you, like I, I'm not like uh, like there's not a whole lot of things that that tickle my fancy. You know, when it comes to the stuff that we do on the show, like I'm interested in all of it, but there's not like one thing that I'm just like, oh, you know. But that that gets me my mind reeling about possibilities on so many different topics. You know what I mean? Is the freaking moon real now? That's what I'm questioning. Is the freaking moon real now? So that, <laughs> that's what I was wondering. I was like, is this just right here in Oak Ridge or is this everywhere? I know. But I was watching literally like the big dipper. Like just, it looked just like, um, like imagine a, a cloaked ship that was just putting out the lights to make it look like stars. And the thing was, it only looked like it was 150 feet above me. Wow. Like it wasn't like the big thing was it didn't look like it was way up there. It looked like it was right there. Like I got to throw a rock and hit it. And they were just gliding around, kind of like just going a few feet here, a few feet back. So, all right, let me ask yeah. you this and then we'll let you keep going in the story. No, yeah. Um, and this is because I, I don't want to forget to ask you this later for my own personal references. Uh, is that the first and only time you ever saw those constellations doing that, or is it, or the, the next night like that too? No, that was that was, was for in this experience that I had. That was the only time I seen that happen. Okay, because I was I'm just trying to gauge yeah. is it worth is it worth me trying to investigate that and going out there and looking in the sky, or am I just going to waste my time and not? No, I went it? back last Saturday after I talked to you uh -huh. when we had first talked, and I, I took a look and there was nothing happening. Okay, gotcha. But All right, hundred percent like. I guarantee you, I mean, I went there for 30 minutes on just a random night. I think that it, what it has to do is you have to go down there and start, you know, get around there. But I was there for three days. I think the people, Ooh. I think they were looking at me before I ever even knew they were there. Wow. Yeah. So just make sure you're staying at the microphone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Cause, yeah, yeah. Cause you're moving side to yeah, side. I get excited. <laughs> That's all right. I feel like I'm Joe Rogan right now. Yeah, get, like, get a little hey, closer buddy. to the microphone. <laughs> yeah, more. Uh, yeah. No, uh, but all right. So. I thought that we were that, that it was it was question and answer time now. So continue with the story, man. Like okay. holy crap! So you went back the second night. Yeah, no, like, I didn't go back. Oh, you didn't go back. No, what happened was I uh, I left that spot uh -huh. and I I went up to where um there is a place off Western Avenue in Knoxville. It's okay. like as you just come out of Carnes, which is not far from that whole area. There's like a uh, a food city, and at the time, like I said, I was staying in my car, so I needed just a place to crash, and I was exhausted. I, I didn't sleep at all that night. I uh, stayed there for like two hours and like I called one of my buddies and I'm trying to explain to him what happened that night. He's just not believing it. And I don't blame, I don't blame him at all. He's like, whatever, dude. You know? So anyway, I ended up like, um, I remember like I ended up on the computer for the next like eight hours looking up like Oak Ridge. And that's when I found out like about like, these portals and stuff. I was like, man, maybe there's some truth to this. Cause whatever I saw was not like, you don't see floating colors that just change into shapes and like that doesn't happen. Yeah. Like even you know, even like Bigfoot's nothing compared to floating colors that change shapes. You're yeah. like, what am I looking at? I'm thinking like, you know, I don't know. So anyway, I did that all day and then I'm like, I'm just gonna stay out here like in this to work closer to the city, call it a night, and then I'll, I'm gonna you know, my job starts like two more days, whatever. So you thought it, you were you were in a safer area? Oh, hundred percent. I'm gotcha. like I'm towards Knoxville now. I'm not out yeah. towards that nuclear power plant. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm right beside. There's like a, I guess they got like a bar kind of down there, and then there's like the shopping mall. You're still kind of out in the in the woodwork though. You're not quite back into Knoxville, but you're yeah. just just on the outside of it. And um, there's like a little swamp down there, and. I was sitting down there in my car and there was one other car that was up. It was like a, a truck. I guess she was probably drunk or something. She had a dog in there with her and she was laying there passed out. So I'm thinking some people are just pulling these places to get when they're wasted and passed out. So they don't get arrested or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was just laying there and I was sitting there thinking I still like my mind still racing about the night before. And I start to hear like bloop, like splashing in the water, just bloop, like splash. And I'm like, what is that? And then a smell came back. It was no like way. I was like, that that real that real nasty heat. And then I was like, oh no, not this again. Oh. So I'm like looking around, um, checking up up on the mountain and stuff. And um, then I hear go like make that sound again. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So now I'm kind of like halfway scared, but like I'm really just getting sick of it. I want to see what this thing is because I didn't know this is Dogman at the time. Oh my god! I didn't know what this was. 
So I like. Um, so, so before you go any further, yeah. I just gotta say this, mm-hmm. like for the audience to know, he's telling me this story for the first time. I've never heard this story before. Uh, I live about twenty minutes outside of Knoxville, uh, and about twenty five minutes from. Well, I'd say from where I live, I, I live probably about 35, 40 minutes from Oak Ridge. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, like I live out in like more rural area. I got cows across the street and everything for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself. Dude, these things could be all around me. It's like the reality of it's just like sitting into me now. And you told me like you're like they're everywhere around here. Yeah, and I'm like, holy yeah. crap. I think I need to make sure I carry a flashlight, a Sony camera, and a big gun every time I go outside of my house now at night. So I, you're just starting, I'm just starting to get a little freaked out now. But go yeah. ahead, continue. I've heard this the whole time I've been here that they were here. I've never believed it. Wow. Because I didn't even know what a dog meant. It said werewolves when I was growing up. They said there's werewolves all over Tennessee. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah okay, sure. But anyway, after that, after that night, I still didn't even know what this was. But the only thing that kept thinking maybe that's what they were talking about was the smell. Just like somebody just threw up dead meat and blood or something. Just like, ugh. Like, really, one of the nastiest smells you'll ever smell. And the thing was the heat of it. It felt like, imagine like a, like a 600-foot man breathing on you. Like, <sighs> That, really? You know, does that stink and just like I don't know what it is awful. So anyway, I'll get let's get back into the story. So I hear the splashing. So now I'm getting kind of like angry, but at the same time kind of curious. So I'm like flipping my car around and I'm hitting my high beams on and I'm aiming towards where I'm hearing the sound. I'm not seeing anything. But what I do see is over towards the woods, I start to see eyes lighting up. Like where you start to see like something's got its eyes open up and then close, eyes open up and close, and they're like sort of like a yellowish green, and they're just like keep opening up. Like I can't tell if its eyes shine or something glowing. It looks like more like eyes shine to me, mm. and um, it keeps it keeps huff. These things keep making the same no- three noises. They do the baru sound. They do like a huff. It's like huff, huff. you know, they kind of like get away from me, and then they do like a a hiss or like. <laughs> Like it's the same three noises every time. They, that's all they would do, because I was trying to like document it. I'm like, what am I hearing? You know. So um, anyway, so I, I kind of played with that for a bit, and then finally I kind of got a little scared. So I drove up towards that girl's truck that was passed out there, and um, her dog just went started going nuts. Like it was trying to get out of the car because was, of you. No, because whatever the heck, the thing started okay. bu- huffing at them, and the dog started throwing up. It was like, Bleh! really? Bleh! And I was like, what am I? Well, this is creepy. So I kind of got scared after I saw the dog's reaction to whatever started happening. So I tried to drive out of there real quick, and as I was pulling towards like the exit, one of these things like howled like by I did one of those by rules like real loud, and it scared me. So I freaking drove off the road. I did ran a red light and took off, and then as I did that, right over to the side of the mountain it was like not a mountain, it was like a small hill kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, I see these red lights come over. It almost looked like um, like the corner lights, corner red lights of like maybe a, an, an invisible craft. I don't. That's the only way I can explain it because I don't know what it was. It might have just been random lights. It might have been some kind of a cloaked UFO. But they came right over this the, the edge of that mountain, just right over the trees on both sides, and started following me. And then here comes that sound. They started screaming from both sides as I was driving. These things were keeping up screaming. Wow. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm I got I got to stop. This is not. This can't be real. I'm losing my mind. I stayed up. Whatever. So I pulled into this like gym. It was uh, right off of Western up there. If anyone wants to look, they'll see it. It's, right, it's going into Western over to, uh, I can't remember the name of that road. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them later if they want to know. Um, so I got out and I tried to walk over towards like a closed gas station. I was like, I just got to get out of the car. I got to get out of this area, whatever. And then this thing started screaming over there. And then I heard like two more screaming across the street. So I mean, there's like multiple at this point in time that are just obviously toying with and you don't know what they are at this I point. I don't know. I don't know idea what they are. I just know they're screaming. And at, at the time, I'm thinking these are some kind of demonic entity. Um, I've seen lights in the sky. I don't. I mean, I'm, I can't imagine UFOs are just chasing me to yell at me. I don't. I have no idea what's going on. Mm-hmm. All I know is that like I've lost all control of the situation, and I've messed with something the wrong. I'm thinking at the same time was the night before. I went over and tried to talk to those colors. And now I've got all this happening. I don't know what's going on. And I'm scared. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I've been doing yeah. like, I didn't, I've done like magic my whole life. I've been into like all the occult. This was like way out of hand. Mm-hmm. Like I lost control of the situation. So anyway, um, what ends up happening is this happens for a bit. They've kind of been messing with me. Finally, I get to the point where I freak out. I'm trying to remember exactly how this went down. I jump on the highway and I, I tried to go to a Walmart on Clinton Highway. 
Because I'm like, that's closer where my ex-girlfriend used to live. And I, at this point in time, I was almost about ready to go back to her house, which says a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, I was wrong. Yeah. Please let me come back in. Uh, Here's was, your apology. I mean, I, I'll be like, you know what? I'll just, even then still, I was like, I might take my chance with the demon. So, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so I go over there and I get to the Walmart parking lot and I pull right in there and it's closed. It's like two in the morning, but they start throwing rocks and it's like, Ding. You know, like where they have those carts at, they have like these metal cart racks. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? So you're in the parking lot yeah. at Walmart. Yeah. And these things are like on the roof of Walmart. I, I can imagine. I can't see them. So you can't see them. I can't see anything. Holy but these God. things are whipping something. They're like rocks or like pieces of something. I don't know. And they're like whack off the metal, like bang, bang. And they're starting to howl again, like make that bar. At Walmart. At Walmart, dude. There's nobody there. <laughs> oh my God. I'm the only one there. And I'm like, this is incredible. I was like, why did I not bring somebody with me at least to like prove this happened? Oh right? Oh my God. Yeah. So anyway, I freak out again because now I'm scared for my life because I'm like, these things are eventually just going to come over here and fucking rip my door off. And then, excuse my language, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, I don't know what's happening because. I don't know. I just didn't, I don't know. At this point in time, it's just it's just been manic. I'm like freaking out. I'm shaking the whole time. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I have nowhere to go. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay. So I just drove up Clinton Highway. I went down to I-40 and took I-40 East towards the like East Town Mall. Just booked it as hard as I could. I just went as fast as I could. And I saw the red lights coming over the trees again. I don't like once again they were following both sides. They would kind of be there for a minute, drift off, come back, and then all of a sudden. One of these things comes up on my left and starts hitting my car and starts banging me. Hold, hold, all right, all right, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So mm. I'm going like 75, by the way. So I'm not you're going, going 75, like, and, yeah. and is it like just what you're seeing? What are you seeing when it's hitting you? I didn't know it was there at first, and then I just if hit my car. I look over and I can see like a black mass, but there's no reflection off it. There's uh -huh. no like anything. I can't see anything. All I can see is that there's something there blocking other traffic. The lights behind me. I can't see it. It's hitting me. And it's like knocking my car. It's trying Can to you feel my, it. Oh like, yeah. It's trying to knock my car off the road. So I'm like, Oh my God. And then this trucker behind me or in front of me drops back, gets behind me and kicks his high beams on and looks at it. And he says, a trucker, yeah, a trucker did. Yeah. And he was looking at me all right behind me. He's got his high beams on. And then he comes pulling up behind me as close as he could to me and speeds up and tries to knock this thing off of me. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, that's why I was like, <laughs> Hammer Road Legends, baby. <laughs> that's legendary. Holy crap. Yeah, he's so, trying to peel this thing off of me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Go, keep going. Just keep yeah. going. So anyway, he got this thing off of me. And then um, what comes up finally is like, a, 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 I think he kind of like peels back and kind of like keep trying to block for me. He's like, what is going on? And then they came to the other side. But like I beat him to got got to this gas station that was up there, it was crowded as hell, and whipped in there, and they didn't follow me past that light. But what they did was they started howling when I pulled in. And uh people there were like, You hear those wolves? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn, dude, this is what crazy. gas station was this at? It was like, um, damn, I think it was like past uh East Town Mall. If you keep going, there's like it's like a um Man, if I can remember, this is McDonald's. Or no, is it going McDonald's or is, I oh, mean. Was it a truck stop? Is that why yeah, there was so many it was like a truck stop. Yeah, yeah that's why there was so many people. Were, gotcha. Yeah, there was like a McDonald's and a Subway or something like that. And it was like a, I'd have to, I could probably show it to you after. Yeah. I just have to look it on the map. So what happened to that trucker? Did he just keep driving? Yeah, he kept going. He was like, whatever. Wow. Man. So so when he when he faded back and got behind you, do you think he had saw what was happening yeah, behind 100%. him? Yeah, 100%. Wow. He saw what happened. He dropped back, put his lights on just to see what it was. And then he come ripping up beside me to try to get this thing off my car. Wow. I, I can show you the scratch I still have on it earlier. For, it's on my car. It's like a, it looks almost like a key mark. It's like fat and then gets skinny. Really? It's and about, that's the claw? Yeah, it's about 10, 10 inches long. Yeah, it's still on my car. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. After he, was trying, he was trying to grab my door handle and the damn thing scratched my car. And I was like, at the same time, I'm like trying to hold this little Honda on the road. So I'm like bouncing back and forth. And this guy was just like polite enough at least to try to help. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. Like that hey, yeah. trucker, if you're out there and you're hearing this, I want to talk to you first of all, but second of all, thank you for thank doing you. that. Thank you. Seriously, because I've, who knows what would have happened. 
Uh, man, that was one thing I was going to ask you to do. If you could reach out to those guys on the Hammer Train Legends or Hammer Truck Legends. Or Hammer Lane Legends. Hammer Lane Legends. Yeah, yeah Hammer Lane Legends. Let, let them know there's a guy who really appreciated that because I was yeah. scared to death. Yeah, Hammer Lane Legends is a podcast that I started with my dad, and now he hosts it with a, a, a driver that he works with. Mm-hmm. And they just talk about uh, trucking and bizarre things they see on the road. Whether it's, Sometimes it's paranormal, but a lot of times it's like... You Just know, like emergency whip them out stuff. Wednesday stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> it was pretty cool show. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, so he he saves your life essentially. We don't know if you'd even be here today if that what that didn't happen. I, you rip into the parking lot of that gas station. Yeah, I, I rip it in there. I get there and I can hear these things howling, like off in the distance. They're across the street. They're like it's almost like they're beckoning me to like bah, bah, like just kind of like making these noises and people are looking over there. They're like, what is that? It must be, it must be blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and I'm looking over there and I'm freaked out and I'm, and people are like, are you okay? And they're thinking, I'm like crazy. And I'm like, did you hear that? They're like, yeah, there's an animal over there. I'm like, that's an animal that was chasing my car. They're like, yeah, buddy. Okay. Here. Wow. The cops showed up, you know? Really? Oh yeah. I was there for like three and a half hours. I'm not leaving. Like, I got scared. And the cops show up? Yeah. They showed up. They're like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, man, I just, I'm really tired. I need to rest for a bit. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. They're like, okay, that's fine. We just heard that she was out there looking out in the woods and stuff. I was like, yeah. I mean, what am I going to tell the guy? I, mean, I just got yeah. chased by a werewolf. Wow. You know, I'd be in jail. What yeah. what, what, uh, what police was this? Was this Knoxville police or oh, do you know? Oh, man, I want to say it was Knoxville. Wow. I, it was, I was not far. I was like um, just past East Town Mall, so yeah. probably Knoxville. Yeah, because I mean, I'm just trying to think like, depending yeah. on what station it is, it, dep- it, it depends on what kind of character it was, it was a, you Yeah, have. it wasn't a state trooper, so, so I'm pretty sure it was Knoxville. So if it was Knoxville City Police, the chances are the police officer... Wouldn't have believed you if you told him. No, but I think if you if you me. were out in the middle yeah. of nowhere and as a local police officer, maybe he'd be like, "Yeah, yeah. I, you know what I mean." So, anyways, uh, so you're there for three hours. The cops show up. They yeah, the sun you. comes up once again. I'm like, finally, the sun's up. They're not going to mess with me. I'm out. Mm. Um, so I get back on the road. No, no sounds. No smell. I'm like, finally. I'm like, thank God. I'm going to get the hell out of here. I'm going to my buddy Chad. He lives over in South Knoxville. I'm going over there. I'm staying there for a few days, and I'm done with this because mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell I've done, but I'm not dealing with them. Yeah, you know, made my <laughs> Faustian pact and it turned against me. I was like, I'm out, bro. <laughs> demonic hellhounds chasing me down Jeez. the highway at like 75. That's not possible. That's demonic, dude. That's not possible. Wow. So anyway, I go over to um. Here's I went over to Walmart at East Town Mall. It was like seven o'clock, six thirty in the morning. Sun's coming up, you know, it's quiet. Nobody's there yet, just open. I pull into a spot, there's like a fence. If you ever go to East Town, you'll see there's like a fence that goes across where there's like a drop off of a wall. And then there's like a little bit of a swamp by where Crystals is. And then it drops off and goes down to like a Burger King. So there's like this big swampy little area. And then there's like a, a like a, a side wall where there's nothing behind there for a bit. Kind of, there's nothing much out there. So I pulled up by that fence. And I'm going to bed. I'm like, I, I have to get some rest. I close my eyes. I pass out. I wake up two and a half hours later, and it's pouring rain. And then over by the fence, boom. This is broad daylight? I mean, yeah, it's, it's raining. cloudy and yeah. dark now. But, but it's, it's during like, the day. It's like 930 now. It's like In the morning. o'clock, yeah. And then over by the fence, boom. Boom. I could smell the smell again. I was like, wow. are you kidding me, dude? I was like, how are these things still here? So I walked over to the fence. At this point in time, I'm like, even if these things could get me, they'd have to go all the way through a chain link fence that's like 11 feet high, jump it, and then come get me. So I'm getting brave at this point, and by, I'm exhausted now anyway. Yeah. I'm like, if you're going to kill me, let's just go. Let's get it done, get it done with. My life sucks anyway. I just lost my girlfriend. I have no you know, fucking friends here. You know, like I don't care. You know, So I walk over there, and I'm looking, and I don't see anything. I can hear it. Like, I could hear the voice or the sounds. If I could smell them, nothing there. And all I could see were these little tiny, you know, those little Christmas lights you get on a tree, they're like white. Like, they're kind of like when you're supposed to be green or blue, but it's like they have the white colors, like a yellowish white. And they're just like kind of, yeah, just the little tiny ones that are like about that, like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch and they're skinny. I see a bunch of those down there, and I'm like, man, these homeless people are out here getting progressive, man. They got like a freaking camp. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, where did they get that? I'm looking down, and then I realize those are eyes. Oh. And there's five or six of these things, and they're sitting there looking right back at me. But they're only about five or six feet tall. They're not big animals like I was expecting. 
They're about, I mean, six foot's still pretty big. Yeah, I mean, but they were kind of like reached and crouched down, so they looked smaller. Mm. And they were like on their haunches, and they had their arms out like this. So you could see them at this point. Oh, yeah, 100%. And they were like, they're, the black on these things is like the black on this microphone. Wow. Like, you, like they're like oil black. Like, you don't see reflection. Like, they were thinking, and these eyes were glowing. And I'm not saying like eye shine. They were glowing like Christmas lights. And they were little beady, tiny, glowing white eyes. And they were looking right at me, and they didn't move. And they were looking at me, and I'm looking at them. About five or six of them. I didn't count them. I know there was a bunch. And they were just sitting there like this. And I looked at them for about 30 seconds, and I was like, nope. And I got in my car, and I drove off, and I never saw them again. Wow. Yeah, that was it. I was like, man, they were there though. That was that was the, that's how I knew what they were. After I saw that, I was like, oh, they talk about the amber eyes people see. Yeah, I didn't see amber. I saw Christmas light looking eyes. They were small, beady, little glowing white lights. Wow. And they were looking right at me. And how was, far were you from it at that point? Oh, uh, ten yards. Really? Yeah, like I was right there. Like, and you could I, see no through a chain link it. fence. Yeah, that's when, what it was. When I first looked, I was looking right in front of me, and there was like this, like the leaves, the foliage was kind of like waving from the wind. It was raining. So I'm looking at that, and I'm like, I'm not seeing it. And I just saw the lights in the background. It looked like if you, like, imagine if you had, like, your Christmas lights set up, you know, 10 yards away, and, like, the trees are blowing in front of it. You can see the lights, and you're thinking, oh, it's somebody's Christmas lights or something. But then when you focus, you realize that the black behind the Christmas lights is an animal. And that's what I'm looking at. Wow. And I'm like, okay, so this, I, I don't know. I've seen a lot of animals. No animal's eyes glow. Right. Like, that's not, that's not normal. Especially like, in daylight. Not in daylight. And like the whole no light source. Yeah, the whole experiences I had with was just it was something that is either interdimensional yeah. or it's demonic. Or it both. has to or be. Both. Or both. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what am I looking at? Yeah. So like the, the most three traumatic days of my life were because of these animals. All right, for our last sponsor today, we have ExpressVPN. Listen, friends, a lot of people don't really get it. Have you ever gone online and you started searching for something? You're like, man, I hope the man's not watching right now because he might label me something that I'm not. Have you ever thought about that in today's time? It's just like, I don't know what's acceptable to even search for anymore and what's going to target me as a certain category of thing that I am not. Well, a lot of people turn on the incognito mode to protect themselves with that kind of stuff, but that doesn't stop the internet company from actually seeing what you're searching for. So have we ever heard of the government coming forward and saying, hey, give us your records to companies and they hand over your phone records and things like that? Yeah, we've heard of that. Protect yourself and your family with ExpressVPN. That's why I use ExpressVPN. I always, always, always use my internet with a VPN because that is the best way to protect yourself and the ones in your household from invasion of privacy. It doesn't matter who your internet provider is. ISPs in the US can legally sell your information to ad companies. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their servers so that ISPs can't see the sites you visit. So if internet security is something that you're worried about, make sure you're using ExpressVPN because they encrypt 100% of your data. It's available for phones, computers, even your smart TV. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit my exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash confess, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash confess, expressvpn.com slash confess to learn more. So I came to like two conclusions. One, one where these things were... I, I mean, I don't know what they didn't. They could, if they wanted to kill me, no problem. Could have done that day one. So why would they do that? So I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, what could it be three options? It was the only thing I could think of. One, they just they want to terrorize you, some kind of S spirit or something, mm -hmm. evil spirit. Two, it was um, maybe. It, the only, the only, I mean, I don't even know. The only thing I think. I mean, I can't even give you three. The only thing I think of was maybe what if the colored thing I messed with was what those red ships were, their lights were, and those things were trying to stop them. That was the only other thing I could think of. That's why they were there, but they never attacked me, but they never stayed far from me. Because I don't know what those colored things were I started with on, but something was evil about them. I knew it right off the rip. I was like, man, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even come close to this thing. So, so, so I don't know. 
So the the colored shapes. Yeah, you 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 just felt like they were evil. I knew it was. Yeah, I knew it was. You, but yeah, I mean, are, were they these color shapes? Are they were they like color shapes as in like a uh, whole shape uh, filled in with color, or was it like outlined color? No, it was a whole shape full of color. Do you do you get and, and how big roughly do you think they were? Um, like if you took my t shirt off and uh -huh. filled it with color, so it's floating so, around. So we're talking about like two three feet, two three feet wide. Yeah. Um. It, do do you where where do where do you think the whole portal thing comes in? Do you think those were portals or what? I think they came through a portal. I think with, the dogmen. I think all of it. All of it came through. I a think portal. all of that okay. through a portal. Gotcha. I think that like I was over by Oak Ridge. I when I was leaving Oak Ridge, I followed. That was the first night. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I was there two nights before, but was not paying attention. I stayed the night there at a friend's. Gotcha. But when I was leaving, I watched that green UFO come right over my car. It was only about like two hundred feet above me, mm -hmm. just in front. And I followed him out. So I felt like he, I, at that time, I just was like, holy hell, a UFO. I've seen a few of those in my life, but this one was close. So I followed him out, and I felt like he was taking me to all this. Mm. So I think that I don't know why he would do it. Maybe he just wanted to, uh, who knows? It could get dark from there. Why are you, why, why are you giving a gender to a UFO? He, I don't know, man. When I think of evil, I should, you know, actually, when I think of evil, I should say women. So. <laughs> he said it. I didn't yeah, say. It. Yeah. Uh, you just came out of a bad relationship. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, so the shapes, yeah. uh, the 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 constellations being projected in the sky, uh, the dog men, oof, you know, following you. So you think that the dog men uh, were what was chasing you down the highway? Hundred percent. Uh, even though you didn't get a good look at what it was, you knew something was slamming into the car. And well, and here's the weirdest part. Here's why I think some of this is demonic, because while it was chasing me and slamming into my car, I could still feel the breath on me. Wow! I was Inside in the car. my car. Yeah, windows but up. I could, I could still feel the heat, and I could still smell it. And your windows were up, though. Windows so were there was up. a barrier. Okay. There was no reason why I should have still felt that. Wow! So this was coming right through the material and hitting me. So I, so part of me was like, maybe this is something demonic. That's mm. why in my head I was thinking this while, while like later on after, because I was like, there's no reason. I mean, the smell, maybe you could still smell it, but there's no reason I should have felt the heat from mm -hmm. it. Because every time I got close to him, I would feel like, uh, like, like I said, like if you went up there <laughs> and you breathe on your hand, you can feel that. That's yeah. what it felt like every time and the smell. Wow. So I yeah. think I, I personally, uh, in, in again, for the audience to understand, if you're just new and tuning in, I'm not a researcher. Mm. I sit down and I talk with people about their experiences. That's how I educate myself uh, through people's experiences. Uh, I, I Listen, if you go online, you try doing research and reading stuff, you're going to get a million people's own personal uh, perspectives as to what they are telling you these things are. I'm more interested in learning from people who's actually experienced it. Um, and so through talking with people, I have come to a my, my soft understanding that I believe that uh, these dog creature things i think that they are from somewhere else I think, so. uh, I think that when they're here they appear physical uh i was just talking to like you, you said you, about wes yeah. i was just talking to wes the other night from sasquatch chronicles and we were talking about this topic actually and this is a rarity but most of the time when me and wes talk we're talking about anything but our podcast uh, but we we were we got into this topic and um we were talking about this and he mentioned about how he he thinks that when these things are in this realm uh, that they have to uh, abide by certain uh, rules in this realm. Yeah. And uh, we could go down a whole path there, but um, it might explain why they appear so physical here. Not, not just rules as, a, as in rules of conduct, but also rules as in physics. Um, and the, the, the trucker helping you like that and stuff. I mean, what he experienced was from his vantage point, but to, to him, clearly it would have had to been something very physical where he thought he could actually push it off you. Even though I think that that was probably at, at the end of the day, probably a useless effort because of what these things actually are. Yeah. He, um, I mean, to his, his vantage point, he's seeing a giant dog chasing me mm -hmm. and he's like, what is this thing doing? But I don't know if he saw the thing reaching out from my door handle, mm -hmm. but I could hear it's like nails, like click clicking off my car. And I was like, man, no, 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 no. I've heard of this. Jeez. Yeah. And then I heard it, I heard it like grab at my door handle and miss. And I heard it scratch. And you know, I thought I was going to have like all these horrible, deep, 
cuts in my car, but it's just one pretty good one. I'll check it out after. Yeah, this. I'll show you. It's yeah. pretty. It's pretty cool. Um, not not for my car, but <laughs> but for the experience, at least yeah. I got some evidence. Yeah. yeah. But um, no. I Why was, did you get your phone out and film it while you're driving 75 miles an hour down, <laughs> down down the highway with the dog man trying to get in your car? Yeah. Why didn't you film it? I mean, I I don't yeah. believe you because you didn't film it. I know. <laughs> right? Anybody that ever says that, I'm gonna be like, wait till something yeah. happens to you. <laughs> I know. And try not to just be like. Messed up the rest of your life because right. it's so horrifying. But, I mean, like I, I've had experiences where, I, like, I see lights in the sky. Like, it ha like it, it just uh, happened the other night. It literally just happened the other night. I was driving home. I pulled a late night here. I was driving home and I saw uh, a light in the sky. That hold on a second. That first UFO you saw, what color was it? Green, Green. Yeah. with a red light going around. Green light around. Holy crap! <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. I saw the same I thing every night. I don't doubt it. Holy a second. crap! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a green no. ball with like a red light that's circling so around I, it. So I couldn't yeah. see it. All right. Oh my yeah. gosh, you're blowing my mind. So I, all right, so... I was driving home uh -huh. and I take the, I take a, uh, I was taking Sevierville Road home. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm totally crap. Oh, so so I, I see this light in the sky and when I, holy crap. I didn't know you had this experience. No, I mean, like, I, I, so I, here's, let me back up for a second here. Yeah, this me. is why when people have experiences, they don't film because they just don't think about it in the moment, right? This experience that I had wasn't like scary or anything, but I was like, captivated in the moment i'm not thinking about recording i just want to I'm, I'm like trying to figure out is this a star or whatever yeah, what am i looking at exactly yeah. mm. so and i'm also driving my pickup truck down back road so i'm trying to stay on the road while i'm looking yeah. out the window and all that stuff but it was it was green it, it, it was like a faint green though like for me because it was it was pretty far away mm -hmm. and it looked like it was a, a red flashing light and it seemed like it was going around it flashing and uh and i'm, I'm trying to watch it as i'm again and it seemed like as I was driving down the road, I wasn't getting closer to it. It was no, like staying an equal you. distance away from me. Mm -hmm. And then I pull into my my, uh, my 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 neighborhood, and I pull down my driveway. And I, when I'm when I'm getting to closer to the house, I'm looking. I'm like this thing. Like I'm trying to fit, uh, like mentally envision where this is in the sky so when i get in my driveway i'm like nowhere to look when i get out because i'm like it's like two three o'clock in the morning i'm like yo i'm gonna freaking I'm, yeah. I'm gonna get a picture of this when i get out of the truck right um so i pull into my driveway and and as i'm getting closer to my neighborhood i'm seeing this thing in the sky and there's no stars in the sky i'm like i'm like ah oh, it must be a cloudy night it's because been cloudy yeah. yeah so like i'm like i don't see any other stars so this can't be just a bright star in the sky and so I, I pull in, into my driveway, I get out of my truck, and as soon as I get out of my truck, I walk behind my truck, maybe like 12, 15 feet up the driveway, and I look up in the sky, stars everywhere, beautiful starry night, I can't see that light anywhere, it's gone, at least That's I couldn't weird. see it, yeah. and I'm just like... That's weird. And I never thought anything about it. I just, I was just like, I, I just actually stood in the driveway admiring the stars. I'm like, man, this beautiful night out. Totally forgot about the UFO or whatever it was. And then I went inside, got changed, go, went to bed until now. I just thought of it. It like, literally just happened a few nights ago. That doesn't surprise That's me. That's crazy, that dude. That doesn't surprise me a bit, man. Wow. This place is weird, dude. I'm telling wow. you. Like, man, I love living yeah, here. <laughs> it gets weird. I, I love living here. Any, everybody should just move to East Tennessee. And the East Tennesseans crazy. are like, no, yeah. stay away. Like, I tell you, the East yeah, Tennessee. They hate you for I know. They're, they're like, they hear me talking, like, where are you from? Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, here we go. You're one of them blue states. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where you come from, the north or yeah, the west? Yeah, you, you're some Yankee. <laughs> you're welcome here, but keep your politics there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like guns, put one in your head. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I show them mine, like, okay, uh, you're fine. You're <laughs> right, yeah. As long as you like weapons and you vote for Trump. Yeah, it, right. it's it's funny because I'm like it's like it's like they they start talking about weapons and I pull my gun out and it's not threatening to them. They're like, oh, so you're one of those? Perfect. Yeah. Welcome here. You know? <laughs> oh, they don't they don't even find it threatening when you pull. No, it out. They're no, like, they're like, what kind yeah. is it? You know? So it's yeah. it's great. I love it. But anyways, back on topic. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. So so I I don't know. I'm not saying I saw the same thing you saw. Uh, actually, what I saw would have been in the direction of uh, Sevierville. Okay. Yeah, um, heading out that way. So, or Seymour. Seymour, probably. Seymour. Yeah, it was more Seymour's, towards that's Seymour. That's where I came through today to get here. Yeah, it, it was more towards Seymour. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's actually the opposite direction of Oak Ridge, but it doesn't matter. This whole area is engulfed in Oak Ridge. It's crazy. Um, I think Oak Ridge has gone to a level now that's like something we've never seen here. I agree. The stuff that's happening now. And that, I think that, it's a new development. Yes, that's what I'm thinking too. I mean, like, I lived here for 10 years. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I came here when I was 16. I lived here until I was 30. 
I saw like a triangle UFO one time. Other than that, I had a, like one sort of cryptid encounter in the park. Other than nothing. I was back here for less than a year and I went out fishing one night and this is the encounter I had by Oak Ridge. And I started looking online and I'm like, I'm not the only one who's seen stuff like this before. And that's what got me to even say anything about it. I wasn't even mm. going to bring it up as I heard you have that conversation where you brought up that, uh, that, uh, that sniper or whatever. Yeah. And he said, oh, she what comes to the portals and that clicked. I was like, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. There's something over there yeah. that's letting this stuff through. Mm -hmm. It has to be. So yeah. I, 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 the, the, that sniper that I met at the party, yeah. there's an update with that. Okay. And I'll, I'll let the people know um, in the sense of this. So uh, he might be hearing this right now. Uh, his wife might be hearing this right now. Uh -huh. They might be listening to my show now. Uh -huh. uh, we've become pretty friendly with them. Good. And uh, really nice guy. Uh -huh. uh, his wife's really nice. And... Um, I actually, we, we might, we, me and my wife were just talking about inviting them over to the house sometime. Uh, but I, I, I ran into him for a second time at a birthday party, uh, a couple weekends ago. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I was like, man, listen, we were at 4th of July you had too many beers in you. And so you said about this portal thing at Oak Ridge, I'm assuming you just had too many beers in you. I was just trying to like give him yeah. an out, right? Wax it off. And, and yeah. he, and, and he, and he's like, no, he's like, he's like, no, I was serious. And I was like. What are you doing to me, dude? Yeah. You know who you're talking to? Oh, like, I'm like, you're killing me. Yeah. And uh, and he basically told me that um, he it wasn't his experience, but somebody that's working there that that he's now you know because he works there too told him that uh, they are opening portals there and that uh, at some point they they whatever they do pierced through to the other side and something came through and what came through. Uh, I don't know if it was physical as well, but it was definitely audible. It was like this, like growl, like like to a, on a level of, of scary that left everybody in the room running for their life, and so everyone just like bailed out of this room once they pierced through this portal. Well, if it sounds like bah, uh, right, oh, no, no, that's what I'm no, saying. No, I'm like, like that's so, the one. <laughs> so I like what I gotta do is gotta see if he's willing to connect yeah. with the person that told him that story because I want to hear what this thing sounded like. Uh, but you know, I would love to have him sometime on the show, but I don't know if he would actually come on the show. I I'm just enjoying having him as a friend. He's hey, just man, a cool dude. I'll give you a list of stuff to ask him. Yeah. That right. I experienced and if any of it matches anything he said, then we're on to something. Yeah. Because well, so, I, so here's the thing. I yeah. mean, uh, in, tw and I don't know if I said this in the beginning of the show, but if I, if I did, I'll, re I'll repeat myself. I've been doing a lot recently. Uh, in 2019, the scientists, they said that they, that they were going to be opening a portal they there. Did, yeah. And then they backtracked it when everybody kind of threw a fit. Yep. And so it, it like, yeah, I did say it because I, I said that scientists aren't comedians. And so, yeah. and they're not. They, they don't do tongue in cheek no, stuff. So, so yeah. uh, and, and what we know about CERN and now Oak Ridge, I, I'm, I'm venturing to think that there might be a connection between CERN and Oak Ridge on a quantum level. And I, I wonder Probably if, if, because CERN just fired up last month in July and for the first time in a year, huh. They're, they're, they're breaking records where they're using more power than ever to power up CERN. They're, they're really kicking it up a notch. Yeah. And is that kicking up a notch over there affecting Oak Ridge here because we have the same tool? It's just a smaller tool, but it's the same type of tool here. And is there some kind of quantum level connection? And, and there's other particle accelerators throughout the world that I have to look into and see where I can, where, if I can locate where they are at. If anybody has a list or knows of other places that have particle accelerators, please reach out to me because what I would like to see is are there things happening in these areas as well as Oak, like compared to Oak Ridge? Because I want to see if it's all connected on a quantum level That's, yeah. because what we're experiencing... What, so what changed recently? Not a whole lot other than Oak Ridge firing up or not Oak Ridge, uh, CERN firing up. CERN fires up last month. I think it was on the 4th of July or the July 5th. It fires up for the first time in over a year. And what have we been seeing the past few weeks here? Crazy electrical storms. Electrical storms, yes. It's like, like the moly. weather, like all the locals I'm talking to, yeah. as somebody who's not from around mm -hmm. here, I, I haven't spent an entire year here. I don't know what the weather patterns are. People are going out of their way. Just normal people telling me, yeah, the weather around here, this is not normal. Like we haven't had this. And and I posted on my Instagram, uh, I think it's my personal Instagram, Tony Merkel official, a video of me and Alex, the guy, the Bigfoot hunter. Uh, we finished recording here. It was like 1230 at night. We go out in the parking lot and the light the sky's lighting up purple and stuff but that was just that night like i'm driving home at night and i'm seeing uh lightning streaks going across the sky to very very isolated lightning 
clouds not moving anywhere. It's just like the, like one like ver- a ball. very isolated, yes. yeah. just flashing, lighting up. And I was actually on the phone with Scott from the, the Freaky Deaky podcast. Mm-hmm. So, so like Scott from the Freaky Deaky podcast is, uh, he lives in Alaska. And so he's six hours behind us. So I can call him at midnight and it's six o'clock his time. He'll answer. Mm-hmm. So I remember I was driving home late at night and I called him because like we, we were actually talking about a marketing thing we were working on. But um, uh, while I'm on the phone with him, the sky is lighting up. I'm freaking out. Anybody can go over and ch- and ask him, like, go to Freaky Deaky Podcast, look up his email and email and ask him what it was like being on the phone with me when this was happening. The sky was lighting up like crazy. I actually bailed off. I've got it on my phone right now. I, I, I probably yeah, do too. Because I, yeah. oh. I, I bailed, I bailed off, yeah. I bailed off into a neighborhood, mm-hmm. parked my truck in some random neighborhood on a hill facing this 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 storm what it wasn't a storm though it wasn't a storm the sky was cl- uh, well the sky was cloudy in certain areas is sparsely cloudy and this thing was just lighting up oh, i know what day you're talking about and i took yeah. video of it and mm-hmm. i sent it to scott because yeah. i was like dude check this out man yeah. and it, it, the, the video didn't do it justice for seeing it in person it never does it never does it never right does, yeah. but like so like the weather around here is being so out of the ordinary that the locals just in conversation are saying how weird it is and from what I, my vantage point, knowing what Oak Ridge is, knowing what CERN is, and no, being aware, not understanding, but knowing that there is some kind of quantum connection through through a quantum level with just the very ex- essence of existence for, yeah. for people and things, I really wonder if there's some kind of qu- at least quantum level connection between the two facilities. And if CERN firing up has affected Oak Ridge, and, and this, this, this is something that I have no proof of, but I wouldn't think that it's impossible do they work together or are like, or, or the ley lines part of it i th- that very might be part of I it i mean actually they call them the dragon paths right so yeah i mean you could think like um i mean any kind of energy level between here and somewhere that matches on the grid would have to be connected in some way anything happened in one place would happen in another but i mean at the same time anytime you you fire up a, a collider you're thinking just the energy level alone would be enough to change everything anyway. Right. So I'm thinking, I didn't, uh, when this all happened to me, I never knew that Oak Ridge was anything but an old nuclear site that was shut down. I oh, you thought they, it was shut down? Oh, I thought they still had like people there, but they were just doing like research on atoms it's or very whatever. very active. <laughs> 100%, man. <laughs> I didn't even know. Really, honestly, up until like uh, I heard about the portal thing because of when I looked into it, I heard that they're like, oh, there's portals in Oak Ridge. I hear there's portals everywhere. Everyone's got a story about a portal, you know? You're like, yeah. oh, yeah, we've seen that. But then when I heard you say that about that sniper, and I was like, hold on a minute. I was like, Merkel's been talking to some people out there that about snipers from the military. I was like, I'm looking at because you said Y12, too. You didn't mm-hmm. give it the old Oak Ridge power plant. Yeah. Y12. I was like, he knows what he's talking about. I'm looking into this, and I was like, dang. Yeah. And then when I was driving, I told you about that sign, the Oak Ridge, um, the billboard. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah, tell him about, the, I, tell yeah, him about the billboard. This is weird. This is so weird. Yeah, so I was telling my boss, man, he's like my friend for like 25 years, about all this stuff that I've been talking to you about now. Uh, I came to, I came to, um, I talked to you first, and I went to him about it because I was like, there's people out here who think like me because he doesn't, <laughs> he don't get it. Yeah. But um, I told him, like, I was like, man, there's portals over there that are opening, and he's starting to get into it too. He's starting to believe like there's some kind of, Something happening because he could see it changing the culture around him. It's weirding mm. him out. So I'm driving in Knoxville one day. We're going to, to do a move to help this guy or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So we're going through there. I see this billboard. It says Y12 on it. And I'm like, oh, cool. A Y12 plant. Let's take a look. It's got two hands held out like it's holding, like, you know, if you're holding uh, like a bread for somebody or water, like you're together clenched up and there's like stars in it. And it looks, two, there are stars in the hand. Yeah, it looks like, like stars and like almost like a portal or like a black hole or something. And it says, sharing the secret. Ah! Yeah. Yo. And I'm like, that's your billboard? I was Yo. like, dang, man. No wonder I saw weird stuff over there. They, 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 dude, they, this is just the common practice, right? They got to they they tell, tell you. They got to tell you. They got to tell you. That's how you avoid karma. Yeah. yeah. So uh, 
listen, uh-huh. uh, I gotta check out that billboard. So like, oh, I, I should have filmed. If I had talked to you first, I would have filmed it, bro. I dude, promise well, you. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and take a picture of it. I got yeah. to, it's gotta be still up there, right? I'm gonna go there today after I get out here. I'll just do it to see dude, if I can get take, it for you. Yeah, definitely yeah, take 100%. a picture. That'd be great. That'd be crazy, right? Oh, yeah. dude, I, I I want that picture. Bad. I, I'm literally gonna go there right now. Mm-hmm. And when I'm gonna get here, and I'm gonna go right back and try to find it because it's like I want to get it for myself too. Yeah, because that is absolutely incredible, dude. Dude, that's crazy. Unreal. So, all right. Mm. Anyway, so 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 th- this experience that you had, yeah. uh, it was it's it's a lot of you having an experience that started around Oak Ridge, followed you multiple days, yeah, and uh, and and this is not this is not uh, any kind of speculative statement I'm about to make. I'm just saying in general, you draw a conclusion that it's tied to Oak Ridge because it started in the area of Oak Ridge, right? Uh, yeah, I was okay. like seven miles from Oak Ridge. Okay. Like there is, I, no, and and just to, just so people understand, yeah. like like I personally believe that Oak Ridge, the existence, physical existence of Oak Ridge, and what they're doing there affects such a large radius away from Oak Ridge. Like just because you're not at the facility doesn't yeah. mean you're not being affected of what's I happening mean, at the facility. You're within fifty miles of yes. a place where there's a portal. Yes, you're where the portal is. Yes, and not to mention that I'm thinking like, hey, if you look at like the, where Mount Hermon was, where the fallen angels, mm-hmm. they picked Mount Hermon because of the oak. They went there to, to build their, their, they cleaned the whole mountain out of oak. If you read, the, if you read all that, that's where they went. So if you say Oak Ridge, you're like, yes. why would they name it that? That's interesting. Yeah. You're like, come on, man. That's where the fallen angels were. They went to, they picked a mountain, Mount Hermon, where the oak was on the ridge. So they went there, wow. they cleaned it out and they used that. That's why they used to say they would slay. If you heard about the early, um, the stories about the Bible, they said, oh, we'll slay your, your gods among the oak. Uh-huh. You know, like that will leave your, your idols among the oak. It's because wow. they would talk about they would like that because of the, the the nephilim and stuff. So I'm like, man, when I heard that, I was like, why would they name it Oak Ridge? So I got me into looking at that. Couldn't find out why they named it Oak Ridge. There's no oak over there. There's no there, there's no <laughs> oak over no there. there. No. Wow. Yeah. There's nothing. Man. So it makes you wonder if it they makes it, you wonder. It, wow. Like, yeah. Wow. And, and and knowing that they built the the nuke there. Like, I mean, that right there, it, it, oh, wow. That's yeah, interesting. It's weird, man. I was like, man, the more I get into it, and you're like, okay, so after they built the bomb, what did they do there for the next 10 years, mm. 20 years, 30 years? My grandfather would be like, oh, he, my grandfather was, he moved here in the 70s. He's dead now. But he was like, oh, yeah, back in the day, it was the secret city. It wasn't on the map. They didn't nobody who was there because they were building the bomb. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, time goes by, and... They people found out about it, but they still like. Uh, he said at the time, he said there's still mathematicians that go there, and I was like, why? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah. I, I I can tell you, um, it, it, like, yeah. See, I gotta start being careful with how I talk about certain people I'm meeting now because I think it's different now. Where in Pennsylvania, I I could meet people and know that they're never gonna listen to my show because it's like. In, in the Philadelphia area, nobody listened to my show. Like I didn't have listeners, and like I had oh, some. Pennsylvania, they're like, but like, but people, they're, they're just like, like I, I didn't have to worry about running to people who knew who I was. Here, it's a little different. And uh, when I talk to people here, it seems like they're more interested in what I do. And so, like, I know, for instance, uh, some of, some of my neighbors uh, since I moved here follow me on social media now, so they they see what I do, and if they tune into the show maybe like they wouldn't appreciate me talking about what they do for a living kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I, I got to start being careful with that. So and, and you're right for this reason alone, because a lot of them don't believe that's what they're doing because they're not part of the whole situation. Like yeah. you said, they might be just uh, building the chair that goes in the craft. Right. But they're like, come on, man. You're especially, me. especially yeah. like, like if you're talking yeah. about people who come from a very scientific background, they already are like, you know, this Skeptical. stuff. They're like, come yeah. on, bro. Yeah. Bigfoot, really? Yeah. Okay. Bigfoot. That was like 1967. Yeah. Progress a little bit, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I, 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 and I get it. Um, but it, it, it's, I think if I had a chance to sit down with a scientist or somebody of a scientific mind like that and just have a hard talk, off air, no mics, just talking, I think I could at least get them to to a point where it's just like, 
I, I, they can't say it's impossible. Plus, he's a Democrat. Then you're <laughs> Come on, man! You're trying to <laughs> trying to knock down my listener numbers after an hour and no. fifteen minutes of recording. You're no, killing no. my audience. I was projecting. No, I'm kidding. I was projecting I'm kidding. myself. <laughs> <laughs> I did not tell him to say that. No, he did not. I said uh, it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it's one of those things where it, I, I just feel like just the limited knowledge. I, like I'm not a scientist, but yeah. I feel like the I know, and I, I, I feel like I can, I can be, I, I can use the apologetics method almost of it, and just be like, you know, I, I can pretty much take what you believe and what you stand for, and and take what I feel like I know, and introduce the topic to you in a way where you can be like, eh, mm, hmm, I guess I can't say it's impossible. You know what I mean? That's all I'm looking for. I'm not asking you to believe me. Just, just, just give it a chance. Just, 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 just maybe acknowledge that. Uh, Okay, if you if you put it that way, then no, I can't I can't say it's impossible. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, listen to everything and make your own decision. Right, right. But don't just take your head off and you know. But listen, let's look at this. A lot of people see this every day. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, and a lot of people are judges. A lot of people are cops. A mm -hmm. lot of people are Tony Merkel. A lot of people are Adam. Yep. But it doesn't mean anybody's any better than anybody else. But we do see it. Right, right. So why can't we not believe that it's possible? Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Heck, I can say I saw a. Uh, a, a parade with Dolly Parton, and I did. But if I said I saw a Sasquatch, people like, nah, uh, it's because you're programmed. You know? Right, right, right. That's the thing about it. There's a lot of programming going on in our world today where they just, if, if, they'll make you feel like you're not socially accepted if you say a certain thing. Right, and right. And people will will stand by it. Yeah. Like even with like poltergeist stuff and like uh, ghost activity or whatever, they'll be like, yeah. ah, can't do it. Sorry. You know, you're like, why? Yeah. Why is it so? Why is it so taboo to say that it's not uh, to say that you uh, see something a certain way, right? You know, but it's okay to be religious. Mm -hmm. See, that's a whole different way. See, what I'm saying is, like, it, I, I don't understand. I just, I don't understand the whole program. I think that if somebody says something, they saw something, you should listen to them. Yeah, and and yeah. here's the thing. Like, I mean, it's not like I have Adam here telling me this crazy experience he had one night or three nights, and. And like that's the first I've ever heard of it. If if it was like if it was like you were alone in the wilderness saying I saw this and stuff, it's like okay, all right, buddy, you know, okay. I'd but, still be saying that if I were you. Yeah, but, that story's crazy. But no, oh. I mean maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm conditioned because of what right. I've been doing the last five years. Awesome. But but like I mean the reality is there are so many people who have maybe not that exact story, but different experiences of running into these, what if you want to just call them for general purposes, creatures, that it's just like, are they all crazy? And some people would say, yes, they're all crazy. Mm -hmm. They're either all crazy or they're lying to you. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. Because there are certain things that I can actually verify. And, and it, it, it leaves it to the point that it's like, I can't speak for Adam and say Adam's telling me the truth, but I can speak to the overall topic and say, yeah, it's real. And, you know, there are certain things that over the years you just, you come to understand, or there's certain things, little tiny things that you're, you've been able to verify a certain specific story that like, well, that story was true. And if that story is true, then who's to say Adam's story isn't true, you know? Right. And so... And that's what I love about the show, man. Like we just have people on, they share their experiences and I'm not here to tell people what to believe. You're not here to tell people what to believe. Like you shared your story. I listen to the story. We have a conversation about it. It's the audience job for them personally to sit back and say, what do I believe? We actually want the audience to think for themselves Absolutely. and make up their own decisions. And if you don't believe Adam, that's fine. But we actually want you to think for yourself. That's you know, like, thing, like, yeah. like, like, uh, we know it's a foreign concept in today's world. <laughs> Everybody's thing. telling you what to think yeah. and stuff. And, 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 hey, don't look at the WikiLeaks documents. We'll look at it for you. We'll tell you what it's in, what's in there kind of thing. That's what they said on CNN years ago. Yep. Like, like, w and we're over here at the confessional saying, no, no, it's actually okay. You, you can think for yourself and sure. you make your own decision, you know? Critical uh, thinking is a skill that's dying quickly. Big time. And big it's time. It's very important. Yeah. So, uh, Adam, man, uh, I listen. I appreciate you sharing this story. I find it fascinating. We're going to continue this conversation into overtime. Of course, uh, we're going to go into maybe we'll touch on the Oak Ridge stuff more. Uh, but we're also going to talk about the Bigfoot encrypted encounters you've had, and also, dude, I do want to get into the whole occultic background that you have and stuff. Because <laughs> even in the email, you said to me um, uh, that uh, paranormal encounters. I'm a Christian occultist, and I'm now, yeah. So, so like, so 
you and I theologically probably don't agree on a whole lot. Uh, maybe not too far off. Well, well, maybe I don't know. Like, I, what I want to do is I want to I want to know what is what is a Christian occultist? Because to me, those well, two you're terms. You're a Christian occultist. Okay, well, so we're gonna have to because I don't think I'm a Christian occultist. I, I don't. So, <laughs> you're diving pretty hard into it for a non Christian occultist. Uh, you see what well, I'm saying? There's, 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 well, all right. So yeah, I, I, I look into things, but. All right. I'm not saying you All practice right. it, but you're okay. very okay. in it. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's, okay. I want to I want to hear what your definition of Christian occultist is, because oh, okay, okay, then okay. maybe <laughs> according to your definition, I am. But I'm very uncomfortable saying I'm a Christian occultist. I know. So. I, thought, I thought if I hit you right there with you, I might get an admission. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, you had me at the subject line uh, portals at Oak Ridge. Oh, you had yeah. me. So All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> let, let's uh, let's move this to the overtime and stuff. Fair enough. Awesome. But uh, before we get out of here, give the company you worked for. For a shout out. Oh, stuff. Mitchell moving in uh, Tennessee. Uh, we work in East Tennessee. If you guys need someone to move, give us a call. Mitchell moving. All right. Yeah. All right. Listen, guys, uh, if you're a member right now, head on over to the overtime. I have a feeling the overtime is going to be at least two hours. Who knows uh, mm-hmm. where we're going to talk about all this stuff. But uh, listen, I appreciate you being here, man. And it was great having you on to talk about this. Oh, Crazy. it's great being with you, Tony. You're a legend, brother. I've been listening to you for five years now. So uh, keep, keep, keep doing the good work, bud. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I know you did enjoy it. So do me a favor and share this show with everybody that's into these topics that you talk to about this stuff. Everybody listening right now, you've talked to somebody in your life about ghosts, Bigfoot, Dogman, something of the like. Those are the people you want to share the show with. So take the link that you're listening to right now and share it with those people. And I thank you very much. Listen, friends, this is an overtime episode. So why don't you head on over to the overtime as a members exclusive? We did a couple more hours over there with Adam talking about his different other experiences. It was great conversation. I know you're going to love it. So head on over there now. And the rest of you, thanks for being here. Until next week, stay safe, take care, and remember... The truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Bye. I'm a chimera 